Hey there, my friends. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. What I have here is a stove from Covia. This is an interesting product. A viewer sent this in for testing out. Michael, thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate you big time. I hope you're doing well. I've been using this. I've been running this stove for multiple months now, and I'm ready to share my thoughts with you all. This stove features an interesting design. One where it excels in summertime use, warm conditions, but also in cold conditions. Before we take a look at this stove, let's talk about this company, Kovia, for a second. This is a South Korean company. They've been making stoves for a long time. You may not have heard of this company, but you've seen one of their stoves before. And that's because they make products for Snowpeak and even MSR. And I'm sure they make stoves for other companies as well. So with the Spider Stove, this is what you receive. You get the storage bag. It has a draw pull at the top. Here's the stove itself, and here is a piezo igniter. Or is it pezo? I'm not sure, actually. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Either way, it doesn't matter. You get the storage bag, the igniter, and the stove. This stove does come in a box, and it comes with instructions, and I'll talk about those instructions in just a minute. But for now, let's focus on the stove. So, you can see the hose here. We have the adjuster at the end. The stove features three legs and they do lock into place. To unlock them, you push them down and they can rotate. You can see the head here. There's no windscreen. There is no igniter built into the stove itself. You can see this pipe right here. We'll come back to that in just a second. When the stove is sitting down, it has a very low center of gravity, so it's very stable. With the top pot supports, again, you have three of these and you can see that they are ridged. Over here at the end of the hose, this is what attaches to your fuel canister. Up at the top here, you have the adjuster, and there's actually a symbol here, and it tells you which way to turn it down and which way to turn it up. Tell you what, everyone, let's go ahead and let's do a quick boil test to give you all a good idea of the performance of this stove. For this boil test, we will do two cups of water which is the general requirement for most freeze-dried meals. It boiled two cups of water, which is roughly 475 milliliters in four minutes, 10 seconds, right around there. So overall, the performance of the stove is not bad. Now let's talk about the BTUs. We're looking at 5,633 BTUs. Something to keep in mind about this stove, folks, is that this has been out on the market for a long time. This came out in 2012. The reason that I mention this in regards to BTUs is that Nowadays, with more modern stoves, typically you will find a stove of this design that has roughly 10,000 BTUs. This is basically half of that. Does it really matter in the real world? Not really. In the real world, on any trip that I've ever been on, I've never noticed this being slow. I've never been in a situation where I was like, ah, oh, this is really taking a long time. Talking about stats for a second, the weight of the stove by itself is six ounces. The weight of the stove, the storage bag, and the igniter, that's seven ounces. And at the time of filming, the cost of the stove is $66. Because of the current state of the economy, things are quite a bit more expensive, and that is the case with this stove. Going back in time, even a year ago, this stove was $20 less expensive. And folks, that is a substantial difference. As far as materials go, primarily, you're looking at stainless steel, there's some copper, some bronze, and some aluminum. I mentioned before that the spider stove can be used in warm conditions and also cold conditions. Let me explain how that works. When it's cold out, you can invert the gas canister and this stove will run on liquid fuel. This right here, right in the center of this stove, this is a heat pipe. Basically, the liquid fuel runs through the hose, it goes to this pipe, that's where it's super heated by the head. It vaporizes and it runs like a traditional canister stove. Let me show you all how this works in practice. And I'll tell you what, let's do a boil test as well with the same amount of water. To run the stove in inverted mode, you have to start like this, you have to turn it on, get it going, and let this run for roughly 10 seconds at a good pace. Basically, what we're doing here is heating up that pipe. Now that it's nice and hot, you can flip this over. Now you'll notice the top of this is flat, and that's for a reason. 
You all noticed as soon as I flipped the can over, this stove picked up in intensity. That is how it's designed to do. Basically, it's a shot of adrenaline. So I cranked it down. It's actually very, very low right now. So let's go ahead and let's crank it up and let's put this water on there. As you all saw there, the boil time when inverted is substantially faster. As I mentioned before, when you flip that can over, it's like a shot of adrenaline for this stove. Something to keep in mind is this. Once you turn it all the way off, there's still liquid fuel in that hose, and it takes a while for it to basically reach the pipe, vaporize, and burn off. In other words, just because you turn the stove off doesn't mean the flame is out, so be careful. When it comes to the dimensions of this stove, about three and a quarter inches high, the pot supports are roughly two inches apart, and the stove is roughly three and a half inches wide when it's folded. And when it comes to the hose length, this is roughly 12 inches long. Overall, my cold weather experience with this stove is limited. I took this out a handful of times. I think the coldest it got down to was roughly like 19 degrees. When inverted, this stove runs at 19 degrees with no problems. The thing is this, you have to keep the fuel canister warm to begin with. You have to set it up, light it traditionally, and then once that heat pipe is warmed up, that's when you flip it. Do not try to start the stove with the fuel canister inverted. If you do try to light it with the fuel canister inverted, you will have a big problem on your hands because you're dealing with liquid fuel that hasn't been vaporized. So it's just a big fireball, so be careful. It should be mentioned, everyone, that there's quite a few stoves out there that feature this sort of design. That does not mean that you can invert the fuel canisters. Only those that have been designed to do so can be inverted. Now everyone, let's move over to my pros and cons for this stove, starting with the pros first. First off, the quality of this stove is excellent. The design is excellent. The legs themselves, excellent. This is a very stable stove. You could put this on the ground, you could put it high up on a table, and it really works well. Because of that low center of gravity, I mean it's solid. You can easily cook on it, you can move your pots and pans around, again with no issues. I mentioned before that this stove came out in 2012. Since that point in time, there's been very few changes, all of them very, very minor. And that's for a good reason. As the stove is, it's a very good design. As far as the stove being reliable, it's been very much so. I've had no issues with the stove itself. Talking about the performance of this stove, I've yet to be in a situation where I would complain about it. Yes, there are plenty of stoves that are out on the market that are faster than this, but in the end, it really doesn't matter. When you're out on your average backpacking trip, it's not about the speed of the stove. Overall, the performance is good, but with that being said, there are better performers out there. There's plenty of stoves with similar designs that offer higher BTUs than this that will boil water in roughly half the time. So the question for you is this, does speed matter? For myself, I can't say that it really does. Going back to the cold weather performance, it is excellent, but that is with my limited testing. More is to come on that. A huge pro for this stove is that there are a number of adapters designed for it, which will allow you to connect this to different types of fuel, including the big propane tanks and also butane. That's pretty sweet, especially when you consider just how inexpensive butane is. Talking about the adjuster here, it is excellent. There's quite a bit of resistance to it, but folks, it works incredibly well. You can simmer all day long, and it's very, very easy to get to that point. And that takes us over to the last pro that I have for this stove. It folds up nice and neat, and you can easily put this inside of a cook kit. Now, everyone, let's talk about the cons for this stove. Starting with this igniter. I hate this piece of crap. This is a piece of junk. It simply does not work. And this has been a complaint by many for many, many years. I have no idea why the company has not addressed this. This simply does not work 98% of the time. Now that I've done this video, I'm going to chuck this because it's garbage. It simply does not work reliably. Next up, my friends, when you go to the Covia website, there is very little information about this stove on there. In fact, it's shockingly limited as far as information. They do not state the BTUs, nothing. They really don't state anything about this stove. It's surprising. The next point that I want to talk about is weight. At six ounces, it's not heavy, but at the same time, it's not ultralight. There are much lighter stoves out on the market, so consider that. For myself, I don't mind the extra weight, especially if the trip is short short. But I'll be the first to say if I was heading out for a big mileage trip, I would take something else. Now that takes us over to the next con that I have for this stove, and that is the size of the burner head here. It's on the small side. So when it comes to cooking, let's say that you want to cook up a big meal, you can do it 
but that is going to make things a little bit more difficult. Because the head is so small, it doesn't distribute the heat all that well. It really does centralize it on your pot or pan. So if you want to go out, maybe you're cooking up a steak, maybe a side, all in one pan, you may want something that's a little bit bigger than this. You could definitely get the job done with this, but you may want something with a larger burner head. Talking about cold weather performance for a second here, something to keep in mind is the hose itself. In really cold conditions, it becomes very, very stiff and it can be somewhat fussy to work with. And that takes us over to the last con for this stove. The company should not be selling this stove in the US with Korean instructions. They need to be in English. Otherwise, someone could easily use this stove incorrectly and they could get hurt. I don't wanna see that. And that right there wraps up my review of the Spider Stove. Now I wanna hear from you all. What do you all think about this? I'm sure you all have seen this before. This has been out on the market for a long time. A very, very long time. You can see why they call this the spider. You have the three legs. It kind of looks like a spider. There's other stoves out on the market that look a whole lot more like spiders than this, but all in all, this really has been a great performing stove. Michael, thank you so much, buddy. I really do appreciate you sending me the stove. I've used this all over the state of North Carolina and it has worked well. I've used it here in the mountains in the snow, then I used it down at the coast and had a great time too. To summarize everyone, this is a very, very good stove. The thing is this, if you don't need that wintertime performance, I would say don't buy this because there are less expensive stoves out there that feature the same design. If you don't need to invert the canister, again, for that wintertime performance, you could save a ton of money going with a different option. Folks, that's my review. Comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you all think about this stove? Do you have any experience with them, good and bad? Share with the community. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. If you wanna support the Outdoor Gear Review, you can do so. You can do so on Patreon or here on YouTube. I appreciate you all. Take care, be well, see you soon.